I found that there was this incredible need in our industry for something, a platform that that promotes every sector of the entertainment industry, that the, the general population are largely complicit in the narrative that the arts are non-essential. And this bothers me because the hypocrisy of that lies in the fact that they consume art daily. I think it's just, it's a very subconscious thing that people consume art without realizing how much impact it has. Um, so if we can just educate, 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 I think that that's where, that is the key to change for our industry. Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome back to Department Spotlight. It's just a show where we talk to our friends and colleagues about their experiences in the film industry. And our guest today is Anastasia Amy. She is a performer, a writer, an educator, an all-round creative force behind lots of things, as well as on cue, which we're going to be talking about today, as well as other things. But on cue, uh, as you'll see, we get into is a online webzine and social media page that really supports all aspects of the South African entertainment industry. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, so just let us know who are you and what do you do? Hello. Well, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to what's going on up here. Um, but basically, I am an actor a poet and writer and an educator. Um, I'm an all-round creative and I founded OnQ, which is a platform that promotes and supports local artists. Amazing. So you said you're an actor. Maybe tell us a little bit about how you sort of found performance or how did you sort of get to where you are? What's the uh, Anastasia origin story? Um, I think I can pretty much put it down to... Um, going to the video store with my parents every single Sunday when I was little. Um, films had a huge impact on me and my need for storytelling. I just, I was so entranced and enthralled by this other world that I was taken into when I watched uh, a movie that was convincing and believable and beautiful. And I just loved the fact that you can influence someone and create so much meaning in such a positive way so I think it definitely started from that and I've just I've always been an advocate for the arts since I was young um, I've always loved writing and performing and I <laughs> it's actually quite funny but um, in in pre-primary I remember dancing on the tables at break time um, I got a lot more shy in my older age um, as one does, you know, you you sort of limit yourself and you kind of inhibit that part of you that's just wild and free and wants to express. And I I started concentrating it more and and um, and yeah, concentrating it in in a way that made sense for me. And I think that's when I found um, writing as well. Um, I started writing poetry. I think I was probably in like grade three or four and it was not very good poetry. I must say, um, I've still got all my old books and <laughs> I once had a friend over and we were reading some of those old poems and it's comedy gold. It's comedy gold. Um, but yeah, it just, it developed from there. I just, I love anything to do with connecting with human emotion. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Um, it's great that it started so early as well. It's kind of like a common thread that we found amongst creatives. It's almost like you struck with something from birth, you know? So perhaps sort of segueing into, into on cue is how important is, because we'll find, find out about on cue sort of advocating for, you know, storytelling in general. Um, I just wanted to ask you, how important do you feel storytelling is to a culture? I think it's so undervalued and underrated. I think that storytelling is honestly the heart of society. Um, it's what keeps it beating, you know. Uh, some of us, we just, we exist 
we don't live, we don't thrive. And I think that art changes that narrative. I think that art genuinely inspires people and inspires change. And it connects us all. Most importantly, it creates communities out of people who otherwise are so far removed from one from one another, you know. Um, so it really is, it's this, this intertwining of different lives. It brings us together, you know. There's nothing as communal as getting together in a theatre space and sitting down and listening to the same story or a cinema or sitting down and speaking about, you know, stories. Um, I think that it's definitely undervalued in society. I think... Yeah, that's that's a whole nother topic, but um, it's it's far more important in our thread and our identity as a society than people really realize. Beautifully put. That was amazing. I was thinking then how, uh, because obviously that uh, uh, the reason why I wanted to ask that question is because I knew that you'd have like a really impassioned um um, answer like that because on Q has got such a sort of strong um, like sort of set of values behind it. Um, so maybe just tell everyone um, what is on Q? Q is yeah my my heart and soul, my little baby. Um, it is basically started out as a social media page, but it's more than that. It's a platform that really supports not just the arts in general, but local artists. I'm very passionate about supporting local artists, whether it's sharing what they're up to or telling the public more about them from a marketing publicity perspective. Um, but it's also about awareness. It's about creating a general awareness for not only the importance of art, but what artists are up to. Um, I found that there was this incredible need in our industry for something a platform that that promotes every sector of the entertainment industry as a whole so there are loads of places that celebrate theater and then there are loads of places that celebrate film and then there are loads of places that celebrate musicians and comedians and poets but there isn't one place that puts them together under a nice umbrella and I think that it's so important to share society's cultural events that are happening, regardless of what they are, whether it's music or a spoken word evening. I wanted people to know what was out there and what was happening. And when people are bored or don't know what to do with their time, they always just end up doing the same thing or going to a shopping mall. And I wanted to really share what is happening in our industry because there is not enough promotion for it whatsoever. Um, and it then developed into an online magazine as well. We have three editions, three issues that have been released this year. And that's been my favorite part really is to just speak to the artists, speak to other people who are passionate like we are who have these conversations and who share their stories. It's really inspiring. Amazing. So, I mean, the next question I have that we, we've you sort of covered already, and if you want to speak to it anymore, is just basically, you know, is what you've been saying, how and why did you start it? So maybe do you have like a sort of one or two sentence of like the core of why you started it? Or I know we just covered that, but um, do you have anything else? I definitely started on Q because it was born from the COVID pandemic, basically. I realized during COVID that, you know, if things were still happening, they weren't being supported and our government, you know, really, really made it known to the public that arts are not essential. And that really rubbed me the wrong way. So I wanted to create a platform that counters that, that really just does whatever it can to promote the arts and local artists. Yeah, it always re uh, reminds me of, you know, those posts that I always shared around social media around, you know, you think art is like sort of not important until you sort of remove it out of every facet of your life. And then suddenly, you know, podcasts disappear, music, you know, the 
beautifully written like little blurb on the like a packet of chips or something like that. You know what I mean? You don't know like how many like facets of of life sort of art you know makes totally. itself present. I I actually wrote something down. I don't know if you mind if I read it because I know Absolutely. this is supposed to be spur of the moment. But no, this really this speaks to what we were saying now is that the the general population are largely complicit in the narrative that the arts are non-essential. And this bothers me because the hypocrisy of that lies in the fact that they consume art daily and then deny its validity. Art's not a nice to have. It's an essential tool for collective healing. And people are using that tool freely um, and without recognition of those who have left it them better than they were before having consumed it. So that's what bothers me so much. It's very much what you were saying. It's it's so hypocritical to consume art all the time, to turn on your radio, to enjoy art, and then to say, nah, society doesn't really need it. Yeah, definitely. I, I 100% agree. That's really well put and also very well written, which is why people should read your <laughs> webzine. What are some of Anku's short-term and long-term goals? Like, where do you see it going? What do you have in the sort of next, I know it's coming to the end of the year, but sort of what's next year looking like and what's the sort of the big goals looking like? I think I am a very spontaneous person when I, although I started thinking about and planning on Q in my mind, I would say about two years ago, um, I very much just roll with the punches and adapt it to what I feel our industry needs. Um, I promote what needs to be promoted. And so I think the short-term goal is really just to keep the page up and running and promote whoever I can, whenever I can. Um, And really just to make sure that the public and the viewers know what's out there and what's happening. Creating awareness is really my short-term goal. But long-term, I'd like to create an impassioned culture, you know, where people know that they can come to Uncue and find just inspiration everywhere. Um, I'd like to keep the magazine going and possibly do a lot more issues. Um, It's just that at this point in time, I am just, I have a lot to juggle. So it's, it's not as far along as I'd like it to be. And it's not, um, you know, I used to do feature Fridays every single Friday and um, time and like you say, the end of the year, everything has just really gotten busy and hectic. Um, but in the long term, I would like it to become a very consistent thing that I promote someone every single week and that the magazine perhaps either is bi-monthly or, you know, at least one issue a month. Um, and as much work as that's going to be, I think it's so important to for our our community to have something that they can relate to and and read and the responses of each of the issues of the magazine have been so lovely and everyone is so supportive because artists support other artists and they want to know what's going on so if I can keep that going I'll be really really immensely happy Mm, amazing. You were saying earlier on about, and you've been mentioning sort of thus far about supporting artists and the word support is obviously a very important one. So we met through SUP. I'm sure the people who watch our channel also know about SUP. I know on the day we're recording this, I mean, not to date it, but that's what I'm exactly going to do, um, is we made an advert that we just dropped about SUP. Uh, we have all of our short films on SUP. And yeah, I reached out to you um, because through what I could see you were doing, the values of SUP and UNQ are sort of similar in a lot of ways. Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think we connected immediately, um, both teams, well, me, the team, and you guys as looped pitches in partnership with SUP. Not only are we all very passionate artists, Um, in our own right, but we also were born out of the same premise. We, you know, we were born out of the fact that we wanted to promote and support local art and local artists. And um, SUP does it through a financial means, through this incredible app that you guys have 
created, which I absolutely love and adore. Um, and I do it in, from a more sort of publicity marketing sort of perspective. Um, so I think that we we do we have very similar goals, objectives, and it was created with the same thing in mind. But I think what really really ties us together. And what is so awesome about both platforms is that we created something, something tangible that is a solution to our industry's problems. You know, we didn't sit there and mope and complain about how tough it is out there because it is. Um, We created a workable solution to the industry's problems. And that is platforms that really do support artists and even if that meant pushing our own art back and not creating as much um, in order to promote other artists for the collective good of our industry. Um, so I think it's amazing that we've created these these solutions. That's what I love most about both Yeah, I don't want to personally take credit for SUP. <laughs> um, I know as Luke Pictures we joined um, later on. That was very much the sort of brainchild of of, of Lydia Stander, and we're all very appreciative. Yeah, so my next question is, I feel like um, a lot of new media platforms, uh, initiatives started by creatives are sort of shifting the zeitgeist in the industry. And we were, you were speaking earlier about the government. And I know, I think it was you who mentioned before that very tone deaf I think it was a tweet or something on social media about saying that sort of theater is like alive and well, and there there seems to be a sort of disconnect between what is actually happening as like a working industry, because I also feel like a lot of sort of what people who are not in the arts, in in a sort of creative field, it seems very sort of like magical, you know what I mean? In terms of like how these things sort of come to be, you know what I mean? Like it's, we work tirelessly to make things seem effortless, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, so I don't think, and I mean, through no fault of own, I'm not like pointing the finger at the public and being like, uh, but I feel like there is this kind of like misunderstanding of, of how much sort of thing go, things go into uh, creating things. So yeah, going back to what I was saying is that I feel like a lot of new media platforms like SUP, like OnQ, initiatives started by create, uh, uh, started by creatives are sort of shifting the zeitgeist in the industry. Why do you feel it's happening and uh, why is it important? I think you've made such an excellent point. Um, it is shifting and I think that that's because, if I can summarize it in one word, I honestly think it's because we all cut for like we are sick and tired of having to explain to people why we're here and why we are necessary. Um, and I think we're tired of movements and governmental grants and trying to, you know, educate people on something that they quite honestly are very much ignorant about. Um, And I say that not from a hateful place, not from a bitter place, just from, you know, a place of of reality. You know, I think COVID has been a huge reality check for all artists um, in how little support there is for us. Um, But I think that the narrative is changing because we just want to celebrate art now. You know, I think we want to um, educate where we can. You know, there's always that educational element in anything that anyone is passionate about. I think when you share how much goes into something and you show those behind the scenes um, things, then people really do appreciate it more. You know, when you let them in, when you break down the fourth wall and you drop the curtain and and you really do show them what's going on. I think it's an eye opener because as you say, people are not aware about how much work actually goes into things. Um, So perhaps I think it's out of a need to really be recognized and appreciated. 
in the way that we deserve or in the way that other artists deserve to be recognized and appreciated. But it's it's lovely that we are breaking down those walls and breaking down barriers. And, you know, I've really realized that artists are the most resilient people. They just don't ever give up. Um, And although we may have lost a lot of creatives to other industries because of the pandemic, um, which is also not their fault and, you know, people have to live. Um, At the end of the day, art's always going to be there. It's not like you're giving it up forever. You know, it will always be there waiting for you with open arms. And I think we just want society to if I can put it very cheesily, um, to embrace art with us. Yeah, that's great. I feel like I want to make a manifesto out of that answer and like (laughs) put it in places. You mentioned um, COVID and while you're speaking uh, and also because I was was looking up on your social media just previously because I tried to to find out what (laughs) your... how to pronounce your surname, what your surname was. And then I saw that you're friends with um, Chanel, who I got the privilege of um, directing her in something a few months back. And she's not studying uh, performance. She hasn't studied performance, but she's studying architecture. I mean, which is amazing, more power to her. I'm not gonna, you know, say you should do this thing, even though I think she's an incredible performer. But, and you're saying, you're talking about artists as well and sort of having to do different things and sort of COVID has like exacerbated that. I've I've also found that maybe this is just like from an outsider's point of view, when looking at like, I don't know, America or England or all these other kinds of places, there has been more of like a, a sort of a safety net, or like a coming together of artists having to shift into other areas of art, but they're still creating, you know, whereas... Here I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot of creatives moving out of a creative field. Um, And I mean, obviously creative field is broad. There's a lot of creativity that goes into other fields or something, you know, I'm not trying to make a sort of S&M kind of scenario, but what do we do? How do we keep artists? (laughs) I mean, it's a different, different case for Chanel. I mean, she was always, she was studying architecture before, but it just made me think of that kind of, thing of like we have a lot of multi-hyphenates whereas in other countries they're just that you know what I mean do you have any thoughts on that absolutely I have so many thoughts on that I mean first of all I do think we are kind of experiencing a bit of a brain drain if you can call it that um like any country that's you know economy is suffering we the arts industry is suffering and it's causing a lot of people to either seek art elsewhere. I mean, I've, I've seen quite a few incredible local, especially musical theater performers in South Africa leave for greener pastures elsewhere. And I can't blame them. And I don't judge anyone for even changing their whole lifestyle and their careers entirely, because at the end of the day, you have to live And as I say, I think we all know that art will always be there waiting for us. And we can always pick up where we left off. It's not something that you ever completely leave behind, even if perhaps you might lose a few of your skills. But it is sad that we have been put in that position at all. Um, It's sad, as I say, that there's this hypocritical... Uh, judgment towards what we do and why we've chosen to do what we do. I mean, even when I was growing up, I I was quite an academic and I got absolutely um, tormented for the fact that I wanted to go into the arts and study drama. Um, it was kind of like, well, why are you throwing your brain away? You know, people don't realize how much intellect goes into creating a piece of art, into creating a story that not only represents and reflects ideologies and belief systems, but that can change them. I mean, isn't that the power of what we do is that it can alter society as we know it. 
And so we are, it's this incredible domino effect in this weirdly ironic situation where we reflecting life and society all the while trying to change it. And on the other end, we're being judged for it um, and not embraced and accepted. And so people have tried to find a place where they naturally, where you want to feel loved and accepted. And if you don't feel that way in your own home, in your country, then, then really, what are you going to do? So I have a lot of thoughts on that, but at the end of the day, you know, I think we are doing what we can. You guys with SUP, me with On Cue, I think more platforms like that uh, need to happen um, so that we can really, as I say, educate people on the validity of what we're doing. I think it's just, it's a very subconscious thing that people consume art without realizing how much impact it has. Um, so if we can just educate, 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 I think that that's where that is the key to change for our industry. Um, but unfortunately, as I said before, it's going to have to come from artists because we're the ones that are suffering and we're the ones that know what needs to happen and what needs to change. And that means some of us are going to have to take a back seat and, you know, march on the front lines and, you know, break down these walls and say, hey, look at us, we're here, we're ready to perform, but you need to accept us, you need to financially reward us, you need to um, put measures in place to protect us because at the end of the day, we are skilled, crafted individuals with tertiary education. Um, but yeah, like you say, with Chanel, I mean, there are so many people who are talented in our industry that haven't studied. And isn't that just so incredible that there's, there's people that can manage both sides, have a career mm. and pursue arts on the side. I mean, we have a lot of that, I think, in our career, uh, in our industry, because I think it's out of pure necessity. I mean, it's not hustle culture. It's out of ne necessity to live. You have to have multiple things going on in order to eat at the end of the day. Yeah. So just changing, maybe changing gears a little bit. Um, I was just thinking about like an issue of on cue. Um, I know you've seen, you've done three up, um, thus far. How do you sort of translate advertising something with the sort of the values that you're describing into an issue? Sort of what goes into writing a piece about an artist or interviewing an artist or a piece of work? Uh, maybe, maybe you can just describe a little bit about that process because it's something I'm really interested in as well. And uh, just in just in terms of like criticism and also what I feel people also really don't understand is from criticism or an interview or something like that the piece of writing in itself is an important creation that can stand by itself as like a piece you know so what's what's that uh, process like for you well I think yeah I think you and I share a lot of interest in that because you like to interview people on a podcast. You also like to write the newsletter and write in general. And, and I love to interview people and then write about their stories as well in the magazine. And I think you're right. I, I hadn't actually thought of it like that, but in itself, the, the, the written material is an artwork. I think my process is very much, it goes about energy. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm pretty sure that you and I have this, the same view on art and, and the world and people and kindness and we just have a similar energy, this synergy with our energy. And I think that I look for that in the people that I interview with on cue. I am very cautious of people who don't share the values that on cue shares and I make sure that, you know, anyone who I interview, first of all, is aligned, aligned with the brand, aligned with our values and morals because they're important to me. And I think I found some incredible people specifically because I look for people who have, you know, the same values as on cue does. And um, that really 
love art, not because of the glitz and the glamour that people think go along with it and not to be in the spotlight, but really to highlight more than be under the spotlight, you know, highlight issues, highlight problems, be a part of a story that's bigger than themselves as an actor. I really am drawn to people who put the story first. Um, So that's the first part of my process. And then really, I think I just love uncovering the parts about people that aren't easily communicated. So it's it's kind of like investigative work, you know, you've really got to try and find the essence of a person. And I think that's that's the beauty and and maybe the art that you that you're speaking of when you can translate um what a person is saying and really find the heart in what they're saying um i enjoy that part of it this is probably just a a, a sort of a talking sort of shop question more than what we've just been speaking about but i always find when writing little pieces about films or maybe even writing like a bio of a youtube video anything like that yeah this isn't really related to what we're saying but i was just i just wanted to ask this question is like there's a line between giving sort of too much away because on one hand you also want people to go and discover it for themselves and i read a lot of bad film criticism that's it's just like a summary of the plot. <laughs> so I suppose this question is also how much of, and it's something that's been said to me is that the people say that, oh, they can see myself in that, the, the sort of the, the review or the overview or, uh, or the criticism. How much do you feel that you bring to one, uh, to your piece that's sort of reviewing another piece or it's about something? How, how much of yourself do you inject into it? So it's a very interesting question but I think that it depends on the writer I I think it definitely depends on your style as a writer Uh, personally I have had a lot more success in being as vulnerable authentic and honest as possible and so that's that's always my sort of take on things if I'm not being true to myself then I'm not writing anything of value to anyone um, and I'm not writing something that people can relate to. So I guess there's that that vulnerability and that human element to my writing. I think it's different, obviously, when you you have to remove yourself to a certain degree in in something like an interview or like a review like you do. But I think you will never, ever be completely rid of your own values and beliefs. It's always going to be biased. It's always going to be skewed towards the things that you're drawn to and the things that you are not drawn to and you're going to leave out the parts that you feel aren't going to resonate because they don't resonate with you um but I think the experience of writing is so personal and that's what I love about it and I think that for me, it's really just about bringing across that human element. So I, I try to make my writing as human as possible with the mistakes, the flaws that go along with that. So it's for me, it's less about perfection and it's more about just being raw and open. Um, but yeah, how do you approach your reviews and do you feel there's a lot of elements of yourself in there? Obviously, I try and like... So the reviews that I have been doing are sort of not like from a sort of critical point of view. It's in terms of like trying to get people to go watch them. So it's kind of like an an ad, an, a little ad. So it's not sort of just pure like criticism, but other sort of criticism that I've like done in the past as well. Uh, yeah, as I say, obviously, you know, it sort of varies in terms of like what you're actually writing it for and where's, where's it going. Yeah, as I say, stuff that I sort of write for in like emails and stuff that goes out to filmmakers, that's with Loop Pictures working in partnership with SUP. Yeah, that's obviously to get people to go and watch those films and engage with those films so that's a different so it's a different sort of type of writing but like I do try like to bring my perspective to it because I've always found it strange how they'll they'll talk about a film through the lens of someone else's review and then I'll be like oh who wrote that review and they don't know who wrote it and it's like but that's kind of that's important right to have your like 
the name there so that that's like a person's opinion on the thing and i always find that like giving a like a number or a star rating or something is nonsense and it's completely opposite to the point of it right because it's kind of like a sort of highly competitive kind of capitalist mindset of like we give something a number that's its value and that's it should that should be its value for everyone else which is kind of the opposite of what I think about from criticism or like or even writing an ad about a piece right it's like as 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 I was saying before that piece needs to like stand on its own besides and not give away anything and be a perspective and 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 a perspective that's an invitation for a, the viewers of that piece own perspective right so that we can add more voices because when you as soon as you add more voices then the conversation becomes like more nuanced right because everyone everyone's, gets included everyone's got a different frame of reference everyone mm. understands things from a different perspective because they have billions of different experiences that have built up over their lifetime that make them the person they are and that give them the beliefs that they have and mm -hmm. and the feelings that they have towards something and definitely I, I i like that you do that i like that you leave it open to interpretation i mean it's like that whole thing of you can't compare apples to oranges you know and it's it kind of as you were speaking it makes me think about um south african audiences that kind of say oh well the production value is not like it is in Hollywood or, um, you know, they, they're forever comparing our local productions, which by the way, some are so incredible mm. because we can relate to those stories um, to these big Hollywood movies that, you know, don't have, that have very little substance, um, but because they have the glitz and the glam and they're neatly wrapped up bow tied and, presented to the world with this marketing prowess, you know, um, really, how can you compare the two and why are people not appreciating? And it's exactly what you say. It's that capitalist mindset of this, this competitive nature, this one upping that we as humans feel the need to do. And I think that true art is not about that whatsoever. And people who appreciate art appreciate it as a standalone thing that can influence you, whether it's a beautiful word or a sentence or a poem, or it's an entire film that moves you. Um, everything has the opportunity to mean something to you and something different to everyone. You know, it's always open for interpretation. Yeah, for sure. Interpretation, open to interpretation, I feel is really important because I always want the pieces to be like an invitation for a person's own opinion. Because, yeah, as you've said, I've also found that, and I don't know how it's created, but there's a kind of like, oh no, I'm just a X, Y, and Z, I'm not involved in that. Therefore, I can't having an opinion about a story that's presented to you, right? I definitely feel like, obviously, in in society, I think it's also sometimes important for people who haven't experienced something to not have an opinion on it um, mm, themselves. Absolutely. Um, but in terms of like an an artwork that's presented, I've also felt like a kind of oh no, you know, I can't have an opinion on it or. You know, you, you know what I'm trying to get at. Whereas I, I like to like invite it and be like, oh no, but just because you know you haven't necessarily you haven't sort yeah. of I like don't know, studied it, you can bring your exactly. own experience to it, right? Yeah, like and that's what like, qualifies you to have an opinion. But yeah. I think it's incorrect in what you're saying. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Um, <laughs> Well, <laughs> as you say, you know, to a certain extent, I think that um, the more open-minded you are about learning from other perspectives, the better. But I do think that there's a time and a place for people to share their opinions. And then there's also, you know, a time and a place to learn from others when you have no um, experience in that particular field um, for example, it, it, you can't speak on behalf of anyone, mm -hmm. you know, you can only speak on behalf of yourself and your experience of something, and you cannot be representational of, you know, 
people who have a very different background or experience than yourself. Yeah, it's a good conversation to have because I don't really, I know someone, just one, one other person who sort of writes reviews. And yeah, it's interesting to talk about it from like a sort of looking at it as like a construct in itself, you know what I mean? how to approach like representing something in terms of even if it's an advert or the way you do things on on cue i feel like that's not spoken about enough either because it's also like a viable career path you know what i mean like we have like a few notable like critics but i don't think people i'm thinking about like critical analysis right and how well, I know at the, the the film school I went to, I didn't feel like we were really taught critical analysis that well. Like we had the sort of core course and stuff, and I'm not like shaming my education from the institution. It was, I, I learned so much, definitely. I'm very appreciative. But yeah, I feel like critical analysis is really important, not just in terms of giving your opinion on something, but being able to... Like a founded opinion as well. Yeah. like Exactly. And that like... And knowing how to justify it, you know, um, with with like hard, not just evidence, but I think any kind of good writing comes from a place where you automatically play devil's advocate, even with yourself, where you can question your own views and challenge yourself on on why you react a certain way to certain things and to also know your own um what is the word know your own triggers Mm -hmm. know what triggers you and why that 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 particular thing in something is triggering to you or why you're drawn to it are you drawn to it because it's good or are you drawn to it because it's represents you and your experience um so I think you're right. Um, as artists, I think, and this is why I'm very passionate about education as well. I think that we need to teach art a lot more creativity in art than we have been. Um, because to think as a creative from a more philosophical point of view, from a more critical point of view, as you say, is a lot more beneficial to society and to whatever narratives we end up creating because we're able to be reflexive, not just reflective. You know, we can Mm -hmm. actually take in and absorb and then question ourselves in all of that as well. Yeah, for sure. The education of it, I think, is also really important, I feel, because it always makes me think of, like, the origins of film editing is very much founded in propaganda and experiments done into propaganda. So not just from like an artist's point of view, but from sort of an everyone's point of view, they need to be able to be taught to have a critical lens so that they can call out, you know, nonsense that is even, even like on a billboard or on Instagram or, you know what I mean? I, I don't think it just oh, we're extends to... we so much in society. Mm-hmm. We're told what to believe and what to think. And it's so subliminal that we don't even notice it anymore. I mean, if you think about anything, social media, Facebook, ad- advertising, and I think that's probably the root of, of these questions that you've been asking me about writing itself, is we have a responsibility you know, um, at the core of what we do and what we share, um, we have a responsibility and so do editors and so do filmmakers. And it's so important that they know that it's important that they know how they have this power to narrate, not only narrate, but obscure narratives and, and, and lead people to believe certain things. So how are you going to do that ethically? Yeah, exactly. I often think about that a lot as well. Responsibility. Yeah, amazing. I think we can we can leave it there. Thank you so much, um, Anastasia, for this conversation. I really enjoyed the tangent that we went on towards the end. Um, I've always been wanting to sort of talk shop with someone else who writes about other works. Yeah, so thank you so much. It was a great conversation. Where can people find you? Where can people find On Cue? Uh, all that good stuff. Thank you, first of all, so much for having me and for this awesome chat. 
it's it's been so lovely and I know we'll have many many chats to come people can find me and on Q on Instagram as well as Facebook I'll send you the links and then you can pop them <laughs> wherever in this we will do. video <laughs> thank you so much for for all your um support for on Q as well I mean we really appreciate it and it would be amazing to collaborate and get you on um, to some reviews at some point as well because that's something I really do want to add to the magazine I've been wanting to for a long time so we must chat about it we will do I really appreciate that thank you so much and that's it for this episode of Department Spotlight. We hope you enjoyed it and would like to extend a big thank you to Anastasia for that brilliant conversation. And if you'd like to follow on cue, check it down in the description of the video below. And below that is the comment box where you can ask us all questions and leave other comments for us. We try and respond to all of them. And also there's a great like button that you can hit uh, if you wanna help us out. And next to that, there's the subscribe button. And also there's the bell. So if you hit both of those things, you'll be subscribed to our channel and you'll be notified of videos as soon as we put them out. We put out videos every week about filmmaking. Uh, we release short films, behind the scenes, other podcasts, camera views, all that good stuff. So until next time, go out there, stay safe and make your movie.